Good afternoon, everybody. Um, first of all, I want to say thank you to the organizers of TED for inviting me along. Whenever I told my husband, who's here today, that I was speaking at a TED talk, he literally nearly fell off the chair and got on the phone to all of his friends to let them know. So thank you for that, Darren. Um, I said to him, Read, I've read about all these inspirational speakers, all these inspirational women who are going to be up on this stage along with me, and I don't know if I really fit in with them. I don't know if I'm an inspirational woman, but he said, Fiona, you talk about chocolate, and it's a room full of women, so I'm sure you'll be okay. I'm sure you'll keep them engaged, and I will have samples um, afterwards. <laughs> so, um, just to start off, um, my first slide is a quote. It's not a quote by um, a philosopher. It's a quote by somebody who, as a child, I didn't particularly look up to her, but it always kind of stayed with me, and I didn't really ever want to live by this quote. Um, it wasn't really what I was about. I didn't really know what I was about, but this is the quote that I thought I'd start with that fits in well with chocolate. I want the world. I want the whole world. Farouk Assault, Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. Um, growing up, I didn't really ever know what I wanted to be. Um, I knew that I was creative. Um, I knew that as a big sister of six children, that I liked to be the coordinator, the bossy one, they would say. Um, I loved helping my mum organise birthday parties, um, organising Christmas. So I had a real gift for the organising side of things. Um, then in school, I was okay at English and Maths, I was okay, I got good enough grades. I think there's something wrong with the educational system here, all the speakers seem to have said they were great at school. Um, but yeah, I was okay, um, came through and then decided to go to the art college in Belfast um, and I graduated with a degree in art and design, but nothing really specific. Um, did a bit of this, a bit of that and was okay again at it. Um, whenever I left art college, my dad kind of said, right, you're going to have to go out and make a bit of money. So I spent a year knocking on people's doors and asking them if they would like portraits done of their houses or of their children. Um, spent about a year doing that and people did actually want me to draw their houses, which I find that very strange. So <laughs> spent a year drawing people's houses. Uh, made a wee bit of money at it but then realized that I needed to get into the real world and I needed to start, I needed to move out of home and I needed to stand on my own two feet. So I became an IT consultant um, and I was there for five years and it is a very male dominated world, not so much now, but it was then and, um, but it taught me a lot, it taught me an awful lot about business, it taught me a lot about networking taught me that I loved meeting people and I loved talking, so this is perfect for me today. Um, and I loved uh, being creative and coming up with innovative ideas. So after five years, I kind of knew that I wanted to pull all my talents together and this amazing opportunity came to me. Um, we were doing the website for Autism Initiatives, the charity that I now work for, and they asked me to become their social enterprise manager. And I was like, I don't know anything about social enterprise, I don't know anything about autism, so why are they asking me this? But turns out that social enterprise is such a blurred kind of term. Um, so to bring me on to, well nearly bring me on to the next slide, um, they asked me to look at a variety of different ideas and the one then that I thought I could do very well to the best of my abilities was one that was to do with chocolate. So, I want to lock it all up in my pocket, it's my bar of chocolate. Um, chocolate to me and product is such a vehicle for spreading a message. Um, say I had to learn all about autism spectrum condition. This is a condition that everybody, no matter how, um, how well versed you are, how much knowledge you have on autism, um, there's always something new to learn. I met we have over 250 service users within autism initiatives, so we, we um, create services for adults with autism. Um, everything from accommodation right through to float and support. 
Um, and it is something that for parents with children with autism coming through that school, leaving the transition from school into adulthood, it's a very, very worrying time. There's not an awful lot of autism specific services for employment out there. There's amazing social enterprise businesses and that offer placements to learn a disability, but autism is so, so specific. So I thought that a chocolate factory would be the perfect place that they could come and learn all about business and become trainee chocolatiers. Um, social enterprise, I know a couple of different, you've heard a couple of different times today and um, I hope some of you uh, know a wee bit about it, but I'm not going to get bogged down in definition because nobody has really properly defined social enterprise yet. But for us, um, it's a business that is trading for a social purpose. 100% uh, of the profits get reinvested back in to create further opportunities. Um, so our social purpose is obviously creating employment and training positions for adults with autism. So after getting funding um, through the Rural Development Programme, we set up a chocolate factory just outside Belfast here. And it's a fantastic place. It really, really is. We hand make all of our own chocolates. Um, such as this bar that I have with me today. Everything's handmade using the finest uh, Belgium chocolate. So just because we're charity, we didn't want it to be a charity product, a one-off purchase, and um, just to say that you bought and given to charity. It needed to be something that really got into the hearts and minds of everyone. Um, so we decided to go for a high-end product. Um, this, this slide that I've chosen this is the space between, so the theme of today is obviously the space between. I describe social enterprise for me that you're kind of stuck in the middle. You're in the middle of running a business, but you're also in the middle of the community and voluntary sector and trying to kind of do something for a social purpose. Um, day to day, as the manager of this business, um, so we're making fabulous products and we're selling in retailers. We do workshops up at the chocolate factory. Um, and we do corporate and wedding events. Uh, day to day, it's looking at this profit making and looking at the social mission. So one day I might have a phone call for a big, big order and I'm like, yes, you know, this is great, money coming in and it's all about the money. Um, the next day I go in and we have a trainee there who maybe has never made a particular product and all of the staff are there concentrating on showing this one person um, how to make a product. That's what it's all about on that particular day. It doesn't matter that we had this big order from a business that's come in. It matters to me because I want to keep the money flowing, but I can't go in and just say drop everything. You know, they can't learn about that today. You know, the, the business side of it's more important because it's the social mission is important. Um, say day to day, the space between um, me meeting with somebody who is giving me business advice, saying to me, why do you not buy another big machine that will wrap those chocolates for you? Why do you not buy another machine that will melt more chocolate or buy a machine that will do that? And I go, oh, right, okay, should I be doing that? But they don't get it. They don't get the reason why we're doing this. Um, I then have to make business decisions based on the social mission versus the profit making. So basically, um, is it to make more chocolate? Is it to make it bigger? Is it to make it exportable? Is it to make a franchise? Is it to make more money? Really, no, that's not what this is all about. It's to make it sustainable. It's to make delicious chocolates that people want to buy again. And it's to make the charity that I work for proud of what we do. But above all, it's to make those who are disadvantaged, valued members of the community. We started off with six trainees um, two years ago. We now, have, we now have 13 trainees who all are trainee chocolatiers and they're so proud to be trainee chocolatiers and be part of this amazing business. So I'm going to leave you just with this one last thought. This final slide, um, I just wanted to look at being an entrepreneur and being a social entrepreneur.
Being an entrepreneur, you get that personal achievement of setting up your own business, making your own money, having the big house. Um, being a social entrepreneur, you're setting out primarily at the start to make a social contribution. Now that can be anything, so in our case, it's to provide adults with autism um, the opportunity of employment. So finally, yes, I'm going to leave you with just a wee thought. If you woke up tomorrow morning, and I still ask myself this, if you woke up tomorrow morning and you had an amazing business idea, and you thought, mm, this could make money and I know this could work, would you actually take a step back and would you say, right, I'm going to run that as my own business, or would you say, perhaps I can make this a social enterprise, I could run this um, for the good of others and to make a social contribution to society. Thank you.